Feel my pain On fire, let them see that my heart is pure I'm feeling like it's caving on me And I just can't speak for what's wrong no more What's up y'all, this your boy Marky Chooks along with my co-host Travis Monfer And today in the studio we got, uh, I don't, I just met this guy But uh, he says his name is Pastor Lamont Monfer And he preaches at a church called Philippian Missionary Baptist Church Located on A Street and uh, here in Lima, Ohio And Pastor Monfer, you have something going on once a month uh, Let's let you explain what's that. Well, really, thank you, Marky and Travis, for allowing me to come and be a part of the show. Uh, really, we have what we're calling Sunday Night Live. We're every Sunday evening, first Sunday evening of the month. We're going to Lima Senior High Auditorium, and we're taking the gospel and the word and worship to the Lima Senior, uh, Senior High School Auditorium. And it's a way of us going out and celebrating Christ, presenting an awesome word and a dynamic worship in a neutral uh, setting where people from every church, uh, class, culture, Culture or color can come and be a part of this worship experience. Okay, so how did this um, how did this idea come about? You well, you know, the Great Commission says go into the world, and oftentimes we get comfortable in our own context of uh, ministry settings in our own churches. And uh, I thought that often, since we have an opportunity to go forth, and that's what the commission of God is, we just wanted to do something different, take the ministry we have in Philippian and make it more inviting by going to where the people feel even more comfortable to come and share with us. Okay, okay I'm going to ask the question that Marky didn't ask. No. <laughs> um, I was at the event yesterday um, and or a couple days ago. And um, one thing that you kept stressing that is not about Philippian church It's not about Pastor Monfort. So why do you have to why do you feel like you have to continually stress that point to people? I think that what has happened in the context of the church today is too many of us as pastors have almost become celebrities and not enough servant. And it's a way of reminding myself that the strength I have and the ministry that I have, it's not about me, it's about uh, Christ Jesus. And no matter who brings the word and who is the worship leader, if we don't present Christ, then it's all for naught. What can people expect uh, at these events once a month? What can they, what is, what's, what's, what's going to be, um, break the mold of just a normal church service? Or is it, is it normal church service? Or, or what, what can they expect to, uh, when they go out to these events? Well, you know what? I'd like to think that every Sunday we worship at Philippian or any other church is a new, fresh uh, worship experience. So there's not a cookie cutter expectation when you come to uh, the Sunday Night Live. We're just going to flow with where the Lord will take us. We're going to have worship and word. Uh, not a lot of preliminaries, not a lot of uh, things that's going in between worship and word. And we're just going to let God's word go forth and the worship to take on its own identity and see where he leads us. So is this an event that you'll, uh, do you think you'll be bringing in anyone from out of town, uh, just other pastors from the city? What, what, what do you... Uh, As a, right now, we're, we're just doing it from where we're doing it and presenting it so that we can make sure we stay in the vein in which God has told us to go. But I have made some connections with some uh, awesome uh, uh, preachers of God, uh, the Word of God, and they will be... Uh, I'll let you know, and I'll be coming back on the show, and I'll give you, the, I'll give you guys the exclusive. But we have some awesome things coming up in the future so exclusive meaning you're not going to talk to wlio right exclusive me <laughs> <laughs> exclusive me is that i'm going to talk to you guys first that's it <laughs> okay hey, where were you suit at today we thought you I mean, you know what man i hey can i not wear a suit sometime oftentimes we want us to wear suits all the time okay. last time i was on here you had on uh blue jeans and a bandana now what? you want to talk about it <laughs> Hold up, you must got me mixed up with somebody on WLIO for real. <laughs> no, we came, we came, thought we had to come with you, man, but it's cool. We, like, next hey, this time we. This is me. On the day of this day, I, I, I like wearing what I wear. I, okay. just, I'm kind, I just enjoy myself. No, no, check this out. I, 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 um, right now, we can't ignore because every time you watch and see it on the. And I want to ask your opinion. Uh, we see Miss um, Whitney Houston. Uh, rest in peace, Miss Miss Whitney Houston. Uh, what do you think? How how how? I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. How, how when the news came to you, were you shocked? Uh, you know, I I could say shocked. Uh, yeah, saddened because uh, growing up, music has been a real part of my life. Uh, in fact, um, 
any major event in my life, there's a song or an artist that's tied to it. And Whitney Houston played a real part of my life growing up in the 80s and the music that she sang and uh, her voice was like none other. And it was very shocking to me to hear the news and saddening and I'm praying for her family. And uh, you know what? I think this is a call for us to pray for celebrities uh, because we think that because they have the fame and fortune, that they're not that they don't have issues and I, I believe that instead of uh, going after autographs all the time maybe we ought to go down and pray that God because they're on a platform that's beyond our even our, even our wildest comprehension the least we ought to do is start praying for them I'd like to say this as an aside and again we are really saddened by Whitney's death I think what is most traumatic to me is when I watch the Grammys and I see a Nicki Minaj uh, give what I call, in no uncertain term, a satanic presentation. And we have to start guarding our minds and hearts and making sure that even though these celebrities are impressive and they have fame and fortune and gift and talent, that we are not so consumed with what they're doing that we buy into some of the things that they're doing. Because that presentation to me, uh, we have to make it aware, make aware to our children that that is not of God. And I would hope that some of our your your uh, viewers would, would get to a place where we speak out and we stop listening to these kinds of music and stop letting these kinds of people impress our children because our children are impressionable. Mm -hmm. And for the exercise that she did on television was probably – uh, the most horrific thing that I've seen in recent history. And so I would hope that in addition to praying for uh, 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 celebrities who might be, and we don't know what happened to Whitney. Uh, we don't really know the circumstances and we cannot rush to judgment, but on a history, she's battled with drug and alcohol addiction. And that's a travesty. But another travesty is that we have celebrities who are now intoxicated by spirits that's not of God. And we have to be very careful because the devil is a shyster. He's a cunning, adaptive uh, chameleon where he can look good. But what he is giving to us in a good looking package is a poison that will ultimately destroy us. So we as Christians and as people who know what is right have to get to a place that we speak out against this kind of stuff and start exalting the name of Jesus and letting it be known. Just because we like a song that an artist sing doesn't mean we need to co-sign when they embark upon a journey that's counter to our Christian conviction. And we were talking a little earlier um, Growing up, I grew up in the you know late '80s, early '90s, and we and uh, rock and roll, uh, heavy metal was big then. And we were quick to talk about how Motley Crue was evil and Poison and, and, and groups of those natures were evil with their music and with their videos and stuff. But when it came around and this you know music that's geared towards a black audience, we're quick to dismiss it as saying, "Oh, that's just artistic and they're not this and they're not that." But I definitely agree with what you're saying. I mean, there's a lot of negativity in music videos and stuff like that, and the and the music that gets pumped out to the kids. Uh, we do need to filter our children out, you know, filter that music out, and those videos out from our children. Uh, on the Whitney Houston tip, uh, it was like, it was really deep for me, you know, because my first um, cassette tape when I got my first Walkman <laughs> was Whitney Houston. So, I mean, that's something that, you know, we've, um, she's the first, or she's the first person that I've had, you know, that I grew up listening to her music and knowing, you know, her life and stuff like that. That, that passed away. So it was, you know, it was, it was deep, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you definitely saw her life spiraling and it's bad that it ended this way and she was such a great talent and everything. But like, like you said, I mean, just because they're celebrities doesn't mean that they're without problems. So, yeah, that's my take on Whitney Houston. Uh, greatest love of all. One of the greatest jams ever. Back to you, Mark. Um, let me see. My favorite Whitney Houston song. Um, I guess the one, morning. no, the one... <laughs> <laughs> no, the one she just uh, not too long ago put out a uh, million dollar, uh, uh, like a million dollars or something like that. It's real groovy or whatnot. I was just looking at the video the other day and going back to something Rev had said, he did. I'm going to say it in another way. I guess Whitney Houston served as one of the people in, in our culture as black people growing up, our soundtrack. 
in our lives. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, different people that, you know, pass, you really don't realize how important they are until they pass. And it's almost like a certain part is taken away from you because you can remember certain times in your life when, you know what I'm saying, these people were, you know, relevant or whatnot. So, um, we just wanted to touch on that. Um, oh, let me say one thing. Oh, I said that's the first person. My fault, Michael Jackson. So this this is like on the same level as Michael Jackson to me. So yeah, I said Whitney was the first person, but yeah, I forgot about Mike. But yeah, definitely, uh, Whitney and Mike. You know, those are the top two. And to watch them, their lives to you know become what they they did at the end was uh, you know, it was definitely a sad thing to see. So that's it. I'm done. Give it back. To you. I'd like to. I, I think that this is something we need to research. And um, since we, I kind of touched on this subject, I'd like to come back on and we have a frank discussion as about uh, some of the celebrities and their religious practices. And in fact, uh, for example, Jay Z, way back when he the song H to the is O V to the is A is really a uh, urban uh, slang. And, but when you break it down, it's Hova, and it is short for Jehovah. And you have to be very careful because when you have people who have gotten so arrogant that they would even ascribe unto themselves uh, a likeness unto Christ. I was in New York City some years ago, and I went, um, uh, as I was going through the Lincoln Tunnel, I saw a billboard, and Jay-Z was on there in this gothic uh, kind of scenery, dressed in black, and the the, sign, the the billboard says, I am what I am, which is a, a illusion to I am that I am. When, when Moses asked uh, God, whom shall I say sent me? He said, tell them I am sent you. I am that I am. And so we have to be very careful uh, just because they're celebrities does not mean that they ought to be our role models because at the end of the day, Whitney's uh, voice is hushed. Michael's voice is hushed. Uh, Mary, uh, the young lady that just passed, uh, Amy, Winehouse. Amy Winehouse' voice is hushed. Luther's voice is hushed. Lou Rawls' voice is hushed. The only voice that will last forever is that of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to hear him say, well done. And sometimes being a, a desirous of hearing him say, well done, it means we have to be mold, bold enough to turn away from the temptation of conforming to a new genre of music that would take us from Christ into chaos. <laughs> hey, what more can I say, y'all? I get leave messages or, or responses at the bottom of the box about this response that uh, we just talked about and about, about this discussion. And we're gonna have you back on sometime later on, and we're gonna talk more into this. Hope to see everybody March fourth at six p.m. at Lima Senior High Auditorium. It is gonna be awesome. Sunday night live worship and word at a whole different level. God bless you. Y'all have a good day. Y'all be blessed. Love one another. Peace. They don't see my love for the people. Instead, sometimes I wonder what am I 